Welcome to the next episode of the IT Woodworker. I'm Chris Kousalis, and this is an empty whiskey barrel. So I bought this barrel because I thought it's cool. I didn't really know what I wanted to make out of it. So I spoke with my wife a little bit about it and she said, maybe we could make a table, cut it in half and put it in our living room. I said, no, you know, let me think about it. I, I think I want to do something different. So I'm cutting it in half and I'm making a table for our living room. So I hope you enjoy the project. If you do, like it, share it, and subscribe to the page. This old barrel has a lot of character to it. You can see the corks in it. You can see the rivets from the bands, the oxidation on the bands, and just all the natural coloring from the weathering of it. We wanna keep this. But to do so, we're gonna to have to clear coat it before we start making the cuts on it and start moving it around. It's pretty heavy, so it'll get damaged up. So by clear coating it before we start working on it, it's gonna lock in that natural patina and it'll make it look so much better. But to do that, first we've gotta get all of the, the roughness off it because the clear coat won't stick very well to the flakiness and the just the particles are on it. So we're gonna use this plastic bristled scrub brush and we're just going to brush the entire barrel to get all of that that loose pieces off it you want to make sure you're wearing at least a dusk mask when you're doing this because this is some old stuff that you're going to be sanding off here now personally i use a respirator because it just clears the particles so much better Well, I finished brushing off the barrel and then I blew it off with my air hose. It doesn't look a lot different than it did before, but all the loose debris off it and the polyurethane is going to stick a lot better than it did before. So I'm using just a Minwax polyurethane and just a cheap bristle brush. This isn't fine woodworking here when it comes to putting on this urethane because the surface is so rough. Now this is going to be inside my house. If I was going to do it outside my house, I would use a Minwax Helmsman spar urethane that helps combat sunlight and the fading. But for this, we're going to use this polyurethane. The barrel has been completely clear coated. We're only going to go with one coat for now because it really is just done to protect the patina on this as we move it around and machine it and cut it in half. Once we get it to just about a finished state, we'll give it a light sanding with steel wool and we'll put at least one more coat, if not two coats on it. So we're gonna let this guy dry and then we'll move on to the next step in the process. We finished clear coating the barrel and we locked in that natural patina. We've also made it so that now that doesn't get on your hands and your clothes when you're working on it and touching the barrel. The next step in the process is to secure each one of these slats to the bands. When we go to cut the barrel in half, those slats will all fall apart. They're held together by pushing them in here and then the pressure from the wood on the rings. So we're gonna use these little screws that have a self-tapping head on them and we're gonna drive them through the bands into the oak wood. As you can see, it's a very time consuming process. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this all together and then we're gonna come back. The screws have all been added through the bands to the tune of about 190 screws. So it took some time. Now I've laid the barrel on its side and I wanna make a saddle for it. What the saddle will do is give us an easier way to let the barrel sit while we work on it. 
the way we're gonna make this saddle is by taking this scrap piece of wood here, setting it against the bottom of the barrel, and then just using a pencil to draw a line. And once we've got that line drawn, we're gonna cut it out with a jigsaw. Now that we have the line drawn on the scrap wood, I've taken two pieces of scrap wood because I'll need two of these saddle parts. And then I've clamped them down on the bench and then I'll cut them out with the jigsaw. That's a perfect fit. Now I'll put some two by fours between them to hold them together and we'll get the barrel set up on the stand. I have built the saddle and the barrel sitting in the saddle. The next thing we need to determine is where we want to cut this barrel to make the tabletop. So we've discussed that it's got a lot of character to it and I want that character to show. Most importantly, I really want to show the cork and then where the, the double rivets are, where the, where the barrel bands hold together. So I'm gonna go up and I've decided that I'm gonna make the cut of the bands right across here. So we won't act, we'll only have to cut the bands and then the board, it'll go in between the boards here. So what I've done is we've put some tape on here and I've drawn that line from where that board is. I've removed the screws so that it's a smoother area for us to cut with the jigsaw. And then I put in a metal cutting blade to go through the bands. I can't stress the point to wear safety glasses when you're doing this. There really is nothing worse than getting a flake of, of metal in your eyes. need to reposition the camera there I got a little close so we'll finish cutting through this side and you can see there's a lot of stress on that barrel so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put these back on we're gonna screw these pieces back on and then we're gonna spin it around and we're gonna cut the other side loose So I turned the barrel around and I just wanted to give you a shot of the inside charred barrel. So I'll be honest with you, I wasn't ready for it to pop apart like it did. So this is the first whiskey barrel that I've, that I've ever cut apart. So I put a brace in there to hold it because when I cut the other one apart, I don't want that to fall and get damaged or damage what's below it. Now the other thing I wasn't expecting is the overwhelming smell of whiskey in my shop. So I'm hoping I don't get pulled over on my way home. As I cut this other side, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. I took some of the screws out and I left some of the screws in. It was pretty difficult on the other side for me to put those slats back into place. So I had to put a lot of pressure on them. So on this side, I'm gonna cut the bands, couple of the bands, put the screws back in remove some screws, cut those bands, and put the screws back in. The other thing that I'm doing is, on each one of the bands that I'm gonna cut, I put tape and a pencil line, because I couldn't see them real well. I ended up being pretty straight with them, but by putting the pencil lines on these, it'll be much straighter. So, let's cut this one apart and see what it looks like.
I put the ends back into the barrel and I've used clamps to clamp them back in there tight so they're back to where they were. Now I need to make a line across the back of the lid so that I can cut it so that it's flush with the top of the barrel sides I've already cut. A whiskey barrel is charred to help give the whiskey its flavor. So it's not really easy to draw a line on the back. Therefore, I'm gonna put a straight edge across the barrel and then I'm gonna use a chisel to, to draw a line across the, the burnt barrel. Here's the straight edge. Here's the chisel. That's relatively hard to see, but it's gonna work for me to put the line on there to cut. If you look closely, you can see the line that we etched across with the chisel. So the easiest way for me to draw a straight line is to put a scrap piece of lumber on that line. And then screw it in from the back side. And make sure the screws you're using don't go all the way through because you don't want to mar up the back side of this that'll be seen. Both sides have been cut and reinstalled. Now we're gonna to have to put some support in this barrel because as soon as I take those clamps off, those ends are falling off. And we're also gonna to have to do something about this chard in here because I wanna use it to store things at in my living room and I definitely can't use it like that. Once the table's done, I wanna be able to utilize it for storage. But to do so, I can't have this black chard inside here. It'll destroy anything that I put on it. Not to mention there is an unbelievable smell from the whiskey that was in here before too. I don't want my whole house smelling like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my random orbital sander and a semi-aggressive uh, sandpaper. And let's see what happens. I can tell you, it's going to be a mess. The sandpaper and the random orbital sander worked pretty well, but it ended up making me look like I'm a coal miner. I stood the barrel on end to clean it out, and it did a pretty good job. We don't want to get it, we don't need to get it totally clean. I just need to get the flakes off there so that I can clear coat it. I clear coated the inside of the barrel, and while it dries, I'm gonna make the top for the tabletop piece of the barrel. Now my planer isn't wide enough to take the whole tabletop at once. So I'm gonna make it in three pieces, get those plane down, and then I'll glue those together so it'll be a little bit less seams for me to work on. Now, I'm sure you can't see it, but those boards are cupped. And you never want the cups to, to be going in the same way. So I flip one of them the opposite way so the cups go against each other. That gives it less of a chance for the entire top to warp. Now I'm gonna glue it up and clamp it. All right, we'll let that dry up and then we'll plane them down.
ear protection, and a respirator. Very important for this party. I finished planing down the boards and they went from an inch and three eighths to about an inch and an eighth. Before we do the final gluing on them, we're gonna have to clean up the edges just a little bit. I know it's kind of hard to see here, but there's some clamp marks. So when we glue it, it wouldn't glue together flush. So we'll just run this through the table saw, clean those up, and then we should be able to do the final gluing before we sand it. Now we're ready to do the final gluing. Here are the three pieces of hickory that we've glued together. We've milled them down so they're really close to the size they need to be. We need to glue these one more time to make the top, but my planer can't fit these through it, so we're gonna have to sand them so there's a lot less room for error. So I'm gonna cut a spline joint in these and then glue them and clamp them. I've cut these spline joints and they'll slip into the wood and then we'll glue it and we'll clamp it and these will hold it from moving much and then we should be good to have it sanded. So here's the before picture, and we're gonna run this through the sander. And I'm here with Will. Hi, Will. Hello. And we're gonna make this thing look nice.
I need to trace a line on the underneath side of the top that we made for the barrel. So to do that, I've cut a two inch block and I'm gonna use a pencil and I'll just trace that line two inches off the barrel following the contour of the radius. We also want a two inch overhang on both ends of the barrel. So I cut a board at two inches. We'll hold it to the barrel. And again, we'll draw that line. Now we'll do this to the other side and we'll cut it out. Now we'll come back with a belt sander and just clean it up so it's nice and smooth. I need to build some support into the barrel because once I pull these clamps off it, the barrel's going to want to come apart. But the first thing I need to do is the support I build in here has to follow the radius of the barrel. So I've marked a line from each side so that the, the support board will be even. Then I take a piece of hickory, I set it on the line, and I make sure that it's totally covered the radius. Then I'm gonna take a pencil, and I'm gonna carefully draw that line on the contour and the radius of the barrel. Now that I have a line drawn, I can cut that out with a jigsaw and see how it fits. We finished cutting the contour to the piece of hickory. Now let's see how it fits. That'll work. Now we'll do the same thing with the other side. Then we'll use the pocket hole jig to drill some holes in it, glue it, and mount it to the inside of the barrel. I've made a pattern out of plywood for the legs that are going to attach to the bottom of the barrel, as you can see over here. But this is going to be a two-step process, as I've got to cut through the hickory that's much thicker and much harder to cut. So first I'm going to cut it with a jigsaw. So if you look closely here, you can see there's the line that I drew from the jig that I that I made. So I've mounted the jig back to the final piece that we're going to make into the leg. And then we're going to use this three and a quarter inch horsepower Porter cable router. And I have a brand new bit in there. Hickory is extremely hard and that's what I'm using for the legs. If the bit's not sharp, you'll blow the wood to pieces. It'll just totally destroy it. So I've designed my table saw to mount an underside 
router to it and use it as a router table. So we're gonna get that mounted and then we're gonna router these pieces. We finished the two base supports and the center support. But this is still rough sawn lumber, so we're going to run it through the planer and then we'll be ready to assemble it. I finished planing them and as you can see, they're very smooth now. We're gonna use this router with a bevel bit in it to just take the, the slight sharp edge off them and give it a little bit of character. You can see we've added that slight bevel on them, give it a little bit of character and now they don't have the sharp edge. Now we'll finish the other two pieces. I've glued and clamped the base together. Now we'll flip it over and we'll run some screws into the pocket holes I drilled. And there we have it. To give the base a little more strength and I'll add some aesthetic value to it, I drilled 5 16 inch holes three inches in. And I'm taking these plugs and I'll glue them and then I'll pound them in to here. This will give it some strength and it'll give it just a pretty neat little look. Now once these dry, the glue's nice and dry, we'll sand it and we'll be ready to stain it. The base has been stained and clear coated and I've set the barrel into the base. Then I put a level on it to get it relatively level. And then I'll be using these heavy duty cabinet screws with a large head to attach the barrel to the base. I recommend pre-drilling holes through the hickory and through the white oak here, because you'll snap the heads off the screws. And you can see I have two pre-drill holes because when I did the rough set on this, I snapped the head off of one of the screws. So now let's screw it in. Now we'll do the other side and we're ready for final assembly. I attached the lid using heavy duty gate hinges. This lid's about 45 or 50 pounds and it's really heavy so I want to make sure it's secure. I also pre-drilled the holes and I used stainless steel screws. Stainless steel screws are significantly stronger than a standard screw. And when I put it together, I just used a hand screwdriver. You're less apt to twist the heads off the screws doing that than you are using a screw gun. Now, understanding the top is so heavy, I'm also gonna put lid closures on it so that it closes more softly and nobody gets their fingers smashed. I've installed two gas-filled soft closures.
Now, we're gonna route our profile around the top, disassemble it, stain it, clear coat it, put it back together. Here's the finished project. With the interior space to hold some blankets in the living room. Then close it and you got a table. Works out perfectly for everyone except this guy who's not happy about losing some of his play space. Hope you enjoyed the project.